everybody, Jared with Ductless Plus. We did three units in this house. Um, we're putting one uh, MLZ KP18 in this garage area. Um, the customer actually didn't want us to run any of the pipes outside of the house. He wanted everything to come down inside the garage. So we're putting up some Unistrut right here and we're gonna clamp it to all our pipes to that. So we can show you uh, what that looks like here in a little bit. But basically we drilled three holes right there. We're gonna tie this unit in first. It is the half inch pipe. So on our MXZ 30s, there's always a half inch port on the very bottom. And then the next step up is a three eighths and the next step up is three eighths. So um, all the smaller lines are all quarter inch. So um, I just uh, wanted to kind of show you that really quick. I'll walk you inside the house. We got these cut in already, Oops, sorry. This here is the attic access that we've been working through. He's got some uh, washer and dryers right here, so we covered them just in case uh, something fell on them. Right back here. Um, because this room is so small, um, we just went with a simple, uh, a little tiny 6,000 BTU for this room. It's a really tiny little room. It's going to work perfect. And if you think about how this building was set up or this house is set up, that wall is the garage wall. So just right on the other side of that is the other unit. So it's kind of nice. And then back here, if you follow me, this is the primary bedroom. Um, we put a, a 9,000 BTU ceiling cassette right there. So that one was a little tricky because it was in that kind of decorative ceiling that kind of dropped down at an angle right there. Uh, I feel like that's like the best look for this room versus putting it somewhere over here. And the reason why that is because the joists actually do run this way. So we were actually fortunate enough to actually get it to fit right there perfectly in between a joist space. So always keep that into consideration when you're doing the installations. You know, try to try to find the most non-obtrusive uh, area to put them in the ceiling, just so that they're not like necessarily in the middle of the room. Are they gonna work any different if they're in the middle of the room? No, they'll work fine. Because remember, we're just extracting heat. Even the discharge out of a mini split is really not that critical. It's more about just the return part of it where we're doing the heat absorption, right? So we're just doing heat transfer. But I guess you still want them to look good, right? We don't want them to look you know, tacky or out of place. So always put that in consideration when you're doing it. You know, he had several other companies come out. Nobody gave him quotes on ceiling cassettes. For some weird reason, a lot of mini split contractors or just unitary heating and air conditioning companies don't like using ceiling cassettes. I, I really truly feel like they're the best looking machine you can get. If you're gonna buy a system, just get a ceiling cassette. The beautiful thing about ceiling cassettes is you can process all the refrigerant piping through the attic. So you don't need to do exterior runs. So he was thinking about, you know, possibly putting like a wall unit above this window, and then you would have a hole right there going down with the line hide, then you'd have a bunch of line hide coming out. You know, that would look kind of ugly. So we did a little thinking about this one. He didn't want any pipe on the outside of the house. So what we're doing is we're gonna take all the pipe into the garage, and then we're gonna run down that exterior wall and out. So anywho, uh, follow me. We're gonna go outside really quick, and I'll show you where the condenser sets. We actually got a ton of rain um, the past few days, and this is the first time I've seen the sun. So we brought some sand with us because there was kind of a, you know, an unlevel area right here. So we got two styles of sand. We got one that was more gravel based. They call that a number, a number two. And then we put that down, and then we put a couple of this really soft, fine sand on top of that, which is like a leveling sand. And if you look right here, I drilled a spotter hole and we're going to drill three holes out to catch this, this unit here. So it's going to look really nice when we're done. Um, the bottom port, if you look here, is the, the half inch port. And then these two ports are three eighths quarter inch. So you got half inch, quarter inch, three eighths quarter inch, half, three eighths quarter inch. And it's A, B, C. So I always recommend you work from the bottom up. 
don't put these in and then try to put this one in. So work, work your way down. So that's exactly how we're going to do it. We're going to drill a hole here, do this one. We're going to drill a hole here, do that one. And we'll do another hole there and catch that. Hello. Yes, how's it doing, buddy? We're doing a happy day in a gloomy day. Happy day. Oh, happy day. want to use a connector uh, it's in uh, my little bag no I, it's in my truck I'll grab it as soon as I wire this
One, two, three. One, two, three. Can we get back, you know? Where you going? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> you know, I gotta rotate this time. I know it's too much. Time. It's too much time, I think. I recommend you use a connector. It's a round hole or one of these on these instead of trying to be like everybody else. Just wrap it around the screw. That's really a tiny way to do it. It doesn't work well. Oh, grab that Yeah, goes right on there, boys and girls. I think that's behind that. The electrician got here before us, so we're gonna have to run the wire. Hold it in there. thing to do when you do these, if you're a good tech, count how many times you rotate it. Like one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Because when you put it back, you know what you're doing. At the end of the day, you only got to rotate it three times. I know, it's too much to, to rotate the thing. I recommend you use a connector if it's a round hole or one of these on these instead of trying to be like everybody else and wrap it around the screw. That's really a tacky way to do it. It doesn't work well. <coughs> Grab that oil. Yeah, it goes right on there, boys and girls. Maybe let's go behind that. The electrician got here before us, so we gotta work around this wire. Hold it in there. Tug it. Remember, black, white, red. Black, white, red. Black, white, red. I like these black, red, white sometimes. I like to do all of them on the same one. Same one? Keanu Reeves, the greatest actor alive. Is he the greatest actor alive? Hey, Keanu. <clears throat> you want an AC? Give us a call. Free. Yeah, we'll put it in for free for you because you're the greatest actor alive. Dr. Plus, boy. How you doing, man? You like? No, I like it. Better stop raining. It's <laughs> a little hard to get out a gopher hole over there. Hey, Letty. We let them go for a hole.
Hey guys, Douglas Plus. This is the new 6000. It's awesome. As you can see, it's kind of a smaller room, right? You can, you know, see why you wouldn't want to do like a 9000 BTU in here. You know, years past, we would obviously do a nine, but now we got the sixes. So from now on, you guys put in these. These are really nice. They're smaller. They're a little bit more easier to manipulate when it comes to installing them. So uh, keep in mind, use the 6000s, all right? We're gonna to go to the garage really quick and then we're... Hey everybody, so this customer was um, a little concerned about cosmetics. So uh, at the beginning of the video, you'll see outside where we ran the piping, but this he didn't want all the pipes running outside down a line set hide. So he was actually fortunate enough that we could put these all inside the garage. So we simply just drilled three holes up there. We sealed them all up with some caulking, the two drains. Um, and then we used Unistrut and some pipe clamps to clamp, clamp down to those. We didn't use Kush clamps, we just basically used a standard uh, clamp and we go over the insulation. I don't like Kush clamps because they can sweat in the summertime and actually drip in a garage. I've had that happen before. Garages can tend to be a little hot and when you're processing refrigerant pipes through there, they will sweat off of a Kush clamp. The little nuts and stuff will, will actually drip a little water. So I uh, no longer use those and I just put these standard uh, three-quarter inch electrical connectors over the insulated pipe and just cinch them down. Remember those pipes are three-eighths inches, the insulation's a half inch, so a three-quarter inch clamp will fit perfectly around the pipe right here. And then this is just a unistrut. We did some up there. Um, and then we did run all the pipes outside right here. I cut a little hole right there and we got all the pipes, the drain lines from all the the three cassettes, they're all tying into here and they go out. Um, this unit and the 6,000 BTU units literally just on the other side of this wall. So it was like literally super easy to run these two drains. And then we ran one from the master all the way over here. So, but anyway, there you go, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Remember like, subscribe, comment, please comment. Um, if you got anything to say, you know, please, uh, you know, uh, leave a comment. I'll definitely work hard to reply back to you. And, and I do appreciate uh, all the time you guys spend uh, sending me stuff. Even if you're going to complain, I, I like to hear the complaints because I'm totally okay with getting better with myself too. So if you're smarter than me or you know what you're doing and you can make me a better tech, let's go. I'm ready. Okay. Douglas Plus. Yep, I think the fan's working, everybody. So we're out here in Parker, Colorado. It's been one, one heck of a couple of past days. It's been raining like crazy, hail, truck got destroyed. Um, but anyway, just kind of want to show you what we did. Um, we obviously put some sand down. We leveled this all up. We used about six bags of sand here. We drilled three separate holes. This is expansion foam. It's not quite dry yet. You can see it's still a little soft, but once it's solid and it's dry, then we can just come out and we'll cut it all off and clean it all up. Do keep in mind, you don't want to start sticking a knife on there until it is 100% dry or it'll like stick all over it and you'll make a mess. And, and I'll tell you one thing, expansion foam, whoever made it, those engineers and those scientists, they made some good stuff. So make sure you seal it if it's not with caulking or expansion foam and it'll just kind of bubble out and then you can get a knife and clean it off and then just kind of just wipe it off with, with, a, little, with a little paper. Anyway, this machine is in heating mode. These are our three control wires. These are our lines. Um, I pushed these back just a little bit so you can see our press fittings. So you can see we ran the press fittings all the way down there. Um, uh, it's not super critical if they're all the way over, but it, it is what it is. But this is uh, the half inch pipe, three eighths, three eighths. Um, this is the machine. It is actually in heating mode right now. You can hear how quiet it is. Listen to how quiet it is. I remember when I was a kid, I liked talking into fans. But, you know, so sometimes you got to be funny, but I know I, I like to be serious, but at the same time, it's, it's uh, important to uh, you know, have a little fun once in a while. Yeah, right. Anyway, this is the machine. It's an MXE 30 hyperheating unit, and it's fully operational right now. You can hear it working. Come on inside. Let's go take a look at the units we did inside. <laughs> sure, yeah. Oh my god, you know, we are just... Know, the FBI is one looking for us for years. <laughs> Too are late. You sure? Are you sure? <laughs> hey, YouTube. Oh. Must have some homeowners here. <laughs> 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 now, this is... 
This but looks great. An opportunity to go to the barber shop. And, yeah, know. here I am in my eighth. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay guys, so I just want to ask you a question. Um, obviously you were having a problem with your existing mechanical system. Your forced air furnace was just inadequate. It wasn't giving you the comfort that you wanted. And you reached out to us and we gave you guys a solution of putting in some ceiling cassettes. I know that you got some other quotes from other folks and they wanted to do some, some wall units. Cool. What do you think of the ceiling cassette compared to a wall unit? Beautiful, look at it. It's wonderful. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You don't notice it and it warms the room immediately yeah yeah and, and it's quiet um, um, yes and excellent insulation thank you so much i appreciate that um when when you start using this machine and you and you can enjoy the heating from it you know you know obviously it's self-adjustable and, and that's something that you were looking for right because your furnace wasn't able to give you the heat in this room or the cooling in this room that you were Correct. looking for. So it wasn't uniform. So that was what you were really looking for. And that's yeah. what's really great about mini splits is they give you that. They'll, they'll let you have the different temperatures from room to room. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, but this is our customers, you guys. They let us come over here and, and bug them for the past couple of days and run around <laughs> with their heads cut off. But in the rain. In the rain. And, and the hailstorm. Oh, the hailstorm. Yeah. And they are wonderful, courteous, clean as a whistle, yeah. and they do everything they promise. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. But thank you guys. I just want to tell you thank you and letting us into your beautiful home. And, and it, was a, it was a pleasure working with you guys. And you guys make one heck of a sandwich, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs>